Hey kids, welcome to unit five, lesson five, enhanced for loops, exercise number three. We have a choose your own adventure. A and B are pretty similar. They're just adding up things. C and D have a little animation that you're going to display. Kind of like the animation, so I'm gonna do C, but really the answer to C could certainly be applied to A and B. Let's go ahead and take a look at the code. An artist wants to create an animation of their favorite artwork and has a 2D array of images they want to use in their scene. Each row represents one of their favorite artists, and each column represents an artwork created by that artist. We go into our Manage Assets. We can see all the images we're about to use. If you're an Animal Crossing fan, you might notice a couple on here, actually. In Art Scene Java, we're going to write the method create scene using enhanced for loops. Draw each image in the current row at a random location. Then we're going to use the pause and clear methods in the scene class to clear the scene before moving on to the next row. And then in my theater, we're going to call the create scene method using the theater play scene to play the scene. Well, that doesn't sound too bad. Let's take a look at our code. We have a 2D array artwork. These JPEGs correspond with the assets we just looked at. We're instantiating one object, my scene. It is from the art scene class, and it is passing along our 2D array. Art scene has one private instance variable. It's a 2D array artwork. Our constructor is taking that array. And then we have a place to write our create scene method. And what we want to do here is we want to go through each of the artists. And as we go through each row, and if we look back here, the row represents one, two, three, four images. We are going to put it in a random location in the X and Y. Then we're going to clear the scene. Do the next row, clear the scene, do the next row. This isn't too bad. We did a lot of this in the theater before. All we really have to do is figure out our enhanced for loop and the rest we know. Let's go ahead and start writing that out. I know I'm going to need a for statement, some parentheses and a curly Q. We'll call this outer. And inside, remember, we need to give it a data type and it's going to be a 1D array. We're passing along names of the file dot JPEGs. That means we're going to be in a string. It's a 1D array. And then we just have to give it a name of a variable to store it. Could be anything. Let's just call this our art. What array are we going to look through? the artwork array. That's our outer loop. Let's do our inner loop. So we need another for statement, some parentheses, some curly cues. This is inner. And in here, I know I need the same data type. So we're going to do a string. This time I need a variable to store each item as we look through it, just like a regular enhanced for loop. I'll call this image because that's what they are. And then we have to go through the above array that we created, which was art. After that, we just want to give it a random position for each row. So that means within our inner loop, we're going to write our random number. So let's do int. And we'll do random X and that'll be equal to, we're going to cast because we want a whole number. So we'll put an int. And then in here, we're going to call the math class. We want a random. And let's just multiply this times, we'll say 200. That'll put us somewhere kind of in the middle, not too crazy. So we'll go times 200. Don't forget your semicolon. The Y is the exact same thing. So we can copy this part. This is going to be int rand Y. 
will be equal to our positions there. Give ourselves a little space. Now we just have to tell it to draw an image. So we're going to go draw image. The image needs the file type. So we're going to tell it the image we're passing along. And then we need that random X position, that random Y position. And then just we want it to be 100% of its size. We want the user to be able to see this. So we're going to pause. We'll say for 0 0.5 seconds. And that'll get us out of our inner loop. After that, we want to pause again. And let's do this for another half a second. Then after that, we're going to clear the screen white so the user can see it for another second as it's all done. Then we're going to wipe it and move on to the next row. Clean up our code a little. Looks pretty good to me. We're not done. We have to go back to my theater and we have to call this create scene method. Let's go back to my theater. Go down here. We have to go my scene, create scene, and then we have to tell the theater to play it. And that's going to be the my scene. Make sure we have stuff spelled right here. Everything looks pretty good. When I hit run, I should get the weeping woman, the old guitarist, the girl mirror, and child dove to appear randomly here. Half a second in between each. Wait another half a second after the last one is printed. Clear it, move on to the next row. Do the same thing. Wait half a second at the end, clear it. Move on to our final one. Well, let's see if we're right, kids. Looks like our code ran pretty good and is intended. Key takeaway from this lesson is further reinforcing how we use this enhanced for loop to traverse through a 2D array. Remember our outer loop that's going through each row of the array. Our data type has to be the same as we're looking through. And remember, we have to indicate it's a 1D array because that's what we're looking through, the rows or the array. Just like a regular 1D enhanced for loop, we have to name the array we're looking through. Our inner loop is looking through each element within the row. That means our array we're looking through has to be the same as the one we created on our outer loop. Just like our regular enhanced for loop, we're creating a temporary variable to store each element as we go through. Remember, it's just temporary. It's not changing the original array. After that, we can use our 2D array like we have in the rest of our lessons. This time we just use it to create a random spot for our images to appear. Hopefully this video helped you understand enhanced for loops a little better. As always, kids, if you have any questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. See you later, kids. Bye, bye, bye.